G'day everyone, this is going to be lots of fun. Thank you for the invitation to come and chat with you around artificial intelligence, particularly the shift from science fiction into the science classroom. Uh, in this session, I've got some information about Microsoft's broad approach to AI, um, plus also some really practical examples of how this is being used in the classroom with a focus around higher education right now. So what does it look like today? It's this interesting, complicated topic, isn't it? Um, especially when we think about uh, about this in education. Um, you know, on one hand, people are talking about AI in relation to analytics and predictive analytics, advanced analytics. It falls into, at times, the arena of gaming, in intelligent app design, uh, in VR and AR. Um, you know, the truth is, is actually all of those, and it can be a little bit confusing for people. I think it's really interesting with the company. Um, one of the things that, that's interesting in March this year, the 31st of March, um, in this state, um, there was a big push led by Microsoft around facial recognition legislation. And this was an achievement which stretched back to 2018 uh, when Microsoft was urging the tech sector to avoid a commercial race to the bottom as it related to facial recognition technologies. And legislation has been brought in here in Washington State by Governor Inslee, which is going to improve the testing and the transparency around the development of those technologies to protect privacy, to address issues of bias. Um, so this is a, 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 obviously a big topic for the company. And, and as a result, Microsoft grounds its broad work in the area of AI around these principles that you can see on the screen. Principles of fairness, inclusivity, reliability and safety, transparency, privacy and security, and accountability. Um, and then we follow through those principles with our particular approach with the development of AI. To innovate responsibly, just because you can do it, it doesn't mean you should do it. It should always be geared up around empowering and building on others, extending the success, and importantly, fostering positive impact. So it's interesting when we talk about AI in the company and beyond, we talk about people. We talk about amplifying human ingenuity. Here's another example just recently over the weekend that came through again about Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft um, announcing new technologies as part of its Defending Democracy program. And this is allowing for deep fakes. So video and audio, which has been manipulated to lead the end user to believe uh, that somebody else has possibly spoken, said, or engaged in behaviors that they haven't. Um, so you can see some details on there. And in this deck, which will be available to you afterwards, you can check out the news article around the technology behind the deep fakes, which is geared up around AI being able to track the thumbprint of originality and then automatically detect where there's been a modification. Some other things that you may or may not know about, you might be interested to follow up, most of these are available to everybody and free, is the launch of the AI Business School, allowing people to lead with confidence, shape strategy, build a culture, um, and importantly, implement AI responsibly. Um, the research shows that not only the potential returns that institutions gain from AI initiatives, but also that the technology needed to begin already exists. In fact, many institutions already have the technology that they need to start to engage in AI to build intelligent agents to support with enrollment and retention, and some details on that. But if you're interested in the AI Business School, you can see some examples on the screen here around some of the things that you can tackle in that courseware AI for Leaders. 
In terms of some of the tools that are available, we have our Microsoft Power Platform, which allows you to analyze and build solutions and build models to automate processes, to actually lean on our cognitive services and our AI engines and machine learning to help you automate um, workflow to actually then allow humans to do what they do best and to improve human and computer interaction. Most of these tools you would have already if you're a, a Microsoft um, user, things like Power BI, which is important because what we make visible, we hold people accountable to when it comes to data. Power Apps, which anybody can take and build a solution around. And we've got a great example locally here where an assistant principal needed a, tech, a technology solution to do with analytics and student achievement. And over the course of a couple of weeks, just built their own using Power Apps. We can share that case study for you. Power Automate and Power Virtual Agents. These are all tools available to you right now that you can use. Here's another interesting story though about Microsoft and AI. More women in India die of cervical cancer than in any other country in the world. And it's a preventive a preventable disease. It kills around 67,000 Indian women per year. That's 25% of the 260,000 deaths worldwide. So Microsoft has been working with a diagnostic company. This company was receiving 100,000 pap smears every year. 98% were typically normal, but obviously the 2% is 100% of a problem for that 2%. What they're doing now is using AI to be able to build and learn around scanning hundreds of thousands of samples to de detect automatically abnormal cells and flag them um, for further identification. I've heard that the accuracy rate of this kind of AI powered analysis at scale is greater than that of humans. Let's have a look at a, a quick story about AI for good with the snow leopard. Um, so the snow leopard, is uh, obviously it's a big dangerous cat in Central and South Asian habitats. And the nonprofit that is focused on the welfare of these cats sets up these cameras which are activated by motion. Um, and they generate hundreds of thousands of photographs of year, a year which need to be then analysed by hand or by eye uh, to work out, is there a snow leopard there? And you could imagine you're going to end up with swaying grass, camels, horses, anything really that triggers off that motion sensitive camera. So sorting those originally was an absolute torture. But the Snow Leopard Trust now uses Microsoft AI to sort the images into a database of sightings, and it does in 10 minutes what would take 10 days, freeing up resources to focus on conservation. So the question is, can a snow leopard selfie save a species? So here's an example just showing them setting up those motion sensitive cameras. The snow leopard population has dwindled. Um, they think there's somewhere between 4,000 and 6,000, but as you could see, the habitat is treacherous. And sometimes they're easy to see and can trigger a photo like this. There's this overwhelming amount of coming and sorting the images into photos with snow leopards and those without has traditionally been, as I mentioned before, tedious. You know, this is not a snow leopard. It's a, I don't know, some sort of deer. Can you see the snow leopard in this photo? Are you as good as AI? There it is. What about in this photo? Can you see the snow leopard hiding away? Surprise. Is there a snow leopard here? Well, it's looking right at you. So the new Microsoft AI solution is accelerating this process with machine learning model that can identify snow leopards and automatically classify hundreds of thousands of photos in just a matter of minutes. And this is the power is around the scale and therefore the ability to learn and to pick up trends. So imagine if this was applied 
in education. And we thought about who was at greater risk, child A or child B. Who's working well, child A or child B? And we could certainly look at child A and B across, in this case, some social and emotional skill dimensions, and we could see that B is more resilient than A. Uh, we could see that maybe A's attendance um, is on the higher end of the scale to B. We might be able to draw some conclusions, but really there's not a great fidelity to our findings. But imagine if that data had was automated and we were looking at the same data sets, but this time across an entire classroom. Might that help us make some more accurate interpretations of the data to possibly work out the impact of interventions? Or if we looked across an entire school, might this help us start to identify some trends connected to other data? Maybe the time of the year, maybe there's a seasonality, maybe it's connected to illness or mobility, maybe it's connected to other factors. What about if that was across an entire district? What kind of information might that provide us at our fingertips that would help us better allocate our most important resource, our time, to the students. Some other areas, and again, links are available uh, in the deck for you to dig into, which I think are really useful for people to know about, is the absolute focus on leveraging AI for good. Um, and we have programs AI for Earth, AI for accessibility and addressing disabilities, AI for humanitarian action for sustainable farming, and other such projects. And you can find out all about those um, by dig digging into the website. If I just pick up the AI for accessibility, some examples that you'll find when you dig down in there. One is seeing AI, and these are all available and free and across platforms, and you can use them now. This essentially takes the visual world and converts it into an auditory message. It tells you what you're looking at. You know, one meter in front is a young woman with brown hair. She appears um, to be smiling. Um, or it's a cloudy day. You're near a street. There's a red car to your left. Helpicto and technologies like Helpicto help young people who are nonverbal be able to communicate more effectively by predicting the kinds of language and the structure of their sentences and help to support them to articulate their thoughts using um, visual representation of words. And of course, Microsoft Translator, um, you know, which allows transcription and translation of images, of text and of spoken word you know, up to 70 languages. It's incredible. Some more information on that in a moment. So there's a little bit more about AI for accessibility that you can dig into afterwards and find out a little bit more about how AI is being used today to support vision, hearing, neurodiversity, mental health, mobility and learning. I talked a little bit about Translator. It's a great example of AI in action, and there's a video on this a little bit later on. Um, you can translate in real time conversations, menus, street signs, also while offline, websites, documents, and more using the Translator app, which runs on Android, it runs on Apple, it runs across devices. Um, Translator translates between more than 60 languages for text translation uh, through the translator which sits on our cloud. Um, and these are available in just about all of our products and solutions now and some examples um, coming up on that. If you haven't heard about this group, it's really fascinating. Um, sitting in Microsoft, we have a group which is the Human Computer Interaction Group. Um, fascinating. World-renowned interdisciplinary team of research scientists, engineers and designers who take this user-centered approach to developing and designing and studying computer technology and its use, this intersection between computer and humans, the interaction 
between them, which is super interesting. Um, so I just want to flag these for people because they may not know about them. But let's jump into a couple of examples um, around this idea of having this power at your fingertip right now. The first one I want to just have a, a quick chat about is OneNote Live. Really exciting convergence of two powerful tools, OneNote and also the Microsoft Translator. I'll be showing the brand new OneNote Live captions feature. This feature fuses OneNote together with Microsoft Translator and Live Captions to allow the most inclusive note-taking experience I've ever seen. This is rolling out right now into private beta and will be showing up later in 2020 in a much more broad rollout. So we'll start out as the educator. The educator has Microsoft Translator, which is free. It's in the web. It's on iPhone. It's on Android. It's a free app. And it will translate and caption in real time in over 67 languages. So the scenario is the Okay, so we can see on the screen here that the, the app itself will translate text, it will translate photographs. You can also engage in a chat feature, which is super cool, free on mobile devices and on your computer. Over to the right hand side, you can see that you can generate a join code. So you can provide that to students or faculty uh, as a QR code or as a, a little bit of text, and they can actually drop in and join that particular translator powered session and engage in real-time chat it's used incredibly powerfully for parent teacher interviews um, where potentially you're working with parents who are speaking a language other than english the educator has shared the join code with a student who's using onenote and now we're going to switch into onenote and see exactly how this works here I am in OneNote for the web, and I'm going to go to the View tab. And I'm the student in this case. So the student is in here, and way over on the right here, there's a Live Captions button, and I'll click that. The Live Captions pane opens. Now as the student, I'm going to paste that join code my educator gave me and join the session. And I'm going to choose a captions language. And you'll see there are almost 70 languages in here, and I'm going to choose English to start and click Join. But I could choose a different language and caption in that language. Now, what you're seeing on the right are captions coming through in real time. So if I'm a student, I can get these captions right here, and I can take notes at the same time. So over here in OneNote, I can still say I am taking notes. Now, let's say the educator was saying something, and I was like, wait, I, I forgot what they were saying. That was something important. In the upper right, I'll click pause. I can pause those captions in real time. So now I can go up here and maybe I want to highlight something. So I'm going to turn on the yellow highlighter and I'm going to go and I'm going to highlight something. That's yellow. That's important. Oh, this part is important here. And maybe I want to go and uh, change the colors to make a different color. And I can even make the text bigger. So if I drop down this right here, I can make the text a little bigger so I can see it. Now the educator is continuing to talk while I pause these captions. And a lot of students would worry that they're going to miss all that information. Well, if I hit resume, what you can see is everything that the professor or the educator was saying is captured right here. So that is really inclusive. Maybe that's something where there's too much information coming and I couldn't absorb it all. Now the other nice thing is that everything that I was saying is automatically captured. Look over here on the left. You're going to see a transcripts section that is automatically created. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the live captions pane. And when I switch over to transcripts, you'll see everything that was being talked about was captured automatically and saved in my OneNote, the entire transcript. So you can see on the transcripts section, this page was automatically created, and it has the join code, the transcript, the date. It even captures all the highlights that I made when it was over there in the captions pane. So all transcripts are automatically saved. And we know from research that having transcripts and live interactive captions helps improve student outcomes across the board inclusively.
Now I'll briefly show using live captions using a different language. So again, on the View tab, way over on the right, I click Live Captions, and I'll enter my join code. And this time, I'm going to choose a different language. There's all these different languages here. And the language that I choose, in this case, is going to be Japanese. And I'll click Join. Now you can see the Japanese characters coming through, and if I speak a different language, then maybe... Okay, so you can see there's a lot happening under the hood there, and the things that are happening under the hood are powered by AI and the cloud. Translating, transcribing, running that through directly into OneNote, automatically generating pages for the transcriptions, bringing across the highlights and the notes. That's amazing. And that's available right now. It's using OneNote from the web, part of Office 365, free for education. This one is too. This is Presenter Coach. If you've ever had to endure an incredibly boring student presentation or colleagues presentation, maybe like mine, maybe they should have used Presenter Coach. So Presenter Coach, is uh, an add-on to PowerPoint that we know and love. And when you run it, um, like I'm running a PowerPoint presentation right now, it starts to pay attention. It pays attention to the time of the presentation, the language, the pace. It looks for filler words. It looks for potentially offensive words. It looks for pitch. And it also even looks for originality. And am I just reading from the slide? Boom. The moment you finished rehearsing, you get a dashboard just like you see on the screen um, showing you basically how well you want. And where you see there's a little learn more, there are tips and tricks to help you improve your presentation. So Presenter Coach, it's available now. It can be used today. Again, part of Office 365, which is free for education, AI powered support for your next presentation. Pretty cool, huh? There is a video, it's available on the deck. Coach, and it's free as Moving along. This next one I just love, it's magic. Um, it's Math Assist. Essentially what happens is you handwrite a maths equation using your digital pen in OneNote, OneNote Online. It will be identified, which is awesome. How about I'll just show you. We'll get Mike to talk us through this one. So I'm gonna be showing some math features in OneNote. This is OneNote for Windows 10. This also works in the OneNote web app and everything here is free. So I'm on the insert menu right here and I'm gonna go over to the math button. And I have an equation selected that I wrote out. And you can see it converts that inked equation over here on the right-hand side. Now I can also type my math out and the exact same thing happens. My selected action, I'm going to choose graph both sides in 2D. And you can see it automatically has a graph that I can explore by just hovering my mouse over. And I can choose to insert that right on the page. I can make it bigger, smaller. I can size it. So really nice for graphing. Now I can also choose to say solve for x. And in this case, it's going to solve the equation. You can see it solved it right here. I can even click show steps and show steps for completing the square. And you can see all of the equation is actually worked out here. And I can understand exactly how that equation was solved. Now another nice thing, I'm going to close the pane and I'm going to go and select this equation again. And I'm on the insert. I'm going to click the math button again and show a different capability. So imagine I'm going to select an action and solve for x. And I want to practice a quiz. I'm, I'm going to go home. I've got a test coming up. I want to practice that math. I click Generate a Practice Quiz. It asks me how many questions. I choose three, and I click Generate a Quiz. Now, using Forms technology, we're going to analyze that equation, embed a form onto the page that has a bunch of questions that are similar but different to the equation up here. So now I've got a bunch of new questions. So I can click here, solve one. So I'm just going to jump on from there, but I think you can see the power of that. It's like giving every student in the class an AI-powered assistant to help support them to do their best. It's not doing the work for them. 
it's showing them the steps, it's providing the scaffold, and then it's providing them with examples of the same level of complexity that they can work through that will be automatically graded by the algorithm and give them the feedback that they need to improve their practice. So again, another, uh, another fantastic example of AI powered support for learners. There's a bunch of others. I'm not going to go into them in a great amount of detail. Smart Insights with Smart Lookup is powerful. So it takes and makes sense of the syntax of text in order to provide much better um, links when you're searching for definitions or you're searching for resources. You've highlighted a word, you go to Smart Lookup, it's going to look out onto the web, it's going to find images, web links, research, definitions, but it's going to sense make that word within the whole paragraph. So you're really getting the accurate word, um, what's intended. There are other tools which are available and they might be a little bit more powerful these days than you remember. So Dictate, sitting in Microsoft 365, lives within Word, Outlook, OneNote, even PowerPoint. And if you haven't used it recently to dictate a presentation, an email, or your thoughts, you'll be blown away by its accuracy. And you can see it as it's typing, again, making sense. So it will type away and Rather than just translating, it'll sense make and it will go back and change words or remove fillers if you're saying um and ah. It will recognize and remove those for you. Super powerful. Um, so one of the things we I, I want to sort of pick up on is not so much the, the, the AI-based super teaching assistant. We're constantly seeing this in the media now about the potential uses of AI to support education. One of the challenges is always around the bias of those who have built the AI can get carried forwards into their solutions, which is why um, diverse diversity is so important in the AI workforce. I want to um, share with you an example from the University of New South Wales with Professor David Kellerman. He's done a bunch of things. One thing he's done is he's built an intelligent question box that gets smarter and it's capable of supplying answers on its own to students, which allows for greater student independence. It promotes personalized learning. Um, so let's just have a, a walk through this. First of all, um, University of New South Wales has got 65,000 students and like lots of universities over the last decade or two, it's seen a sea change in education, flipped classrooms, MOOCs, virtual education, and obviously at the moment, a heavy push on to remote learning across the globe. So what the University of New South Wales has done is it's really lent in on two things. One is Microsoft Teams, and the other is the power of AI uh, to help support their students. Um, so their engineering faculty has over 17,000 students in itself. and. You know, they, they had this radical idea um, in building this bot and also in building up the expertise with teams. Think about this, they have classes of 500 people and there's a challenge. How do you get 500 students to work together as a team on and off the campus? And Microsoft Teams provided that solution rapidly. Question bot took only eight weeks from idea to implementation. It's a blink of an eye in terms of development. Office 365 and the Azure Cognitive Services have been combined, and then they've been interconnected. Um, so for David Kellerman, that allow them to build something very, very quickly. In the first two weeks alone, it automatically logged 200 topic categorized question and answer pairs, um, which is remarkable. And it's this model of, um, you know, educational AI that does things that humans can't practically do in volumes that are needed. It connects people rather than just automating. Um, it trains itself to be more useful and it has no real edge or limit because it generates the knowledge and the connections that it accrues. And 
By leveraging the Microsoft solutions, Dr. Kellerman has brought AI into education and learning, and it's provided this deeply human learning experience at scale through Teams, driving the collaboration, and through the question bot being able to generate solutions that people need when they need those. So in wrapping up, um, you've seen some examples of AI as it's being currently used in education solutions um, that are all powered by Office 365, free for education. We've touched on some of the other areas around intelligent agents uh, and around education analytics and the ability to work at scale and with fidelity. Um, and I love this quote from Satya, rather than thinking in terms of human versus machine, we want to focus on our human gifts such as creativity, empathy, emotion, physicality and insight can be mixed with powerful AI computation to help move society forward. So I've introduced you to a touch of Microsoft's um, focus on AI for good uh, and also the pillars upon which we build our AI solution. So the deck will be available for you with lots more links in there that you can dig into and find out more. As I said, I'm Mark Sparvel from Microsoft. This has been an introduction and an invitation to follow up further. Enjoy the rest of your time.